So, yes, we're going to have one of our recorded sessions. And you you told me about a um, issue on email, but you get to remind me, okay? Sure, sure. Um, the issue is that I feel like I always need to be a little bit better. Like, I can take this course and that course and um, I'll be doing something very successfully and think, wow, if I just took one more course or became certified in one more thing, I would really be ready. I would really be good enough. Yes. And then, and then you do that and you're maybe you're better and you know some things you didn't know, but ooh, there's always something more, right? There, here's the next one and the next one and the next one. Yes, yes. And the feedback that I get from my business coach and my the people who like co-host some of the meetings I have and stuff is you're good. You need to just trust yourself. You need to quit. Cut it out. Cut it out. So I know it's all internal, you know, that that I'm I'm just fine, just fine as I am, that I'm good enough. But I I don't actually believe it or I wouldn't keep doing this. Yeah, at some at some level underneath there, you are somehow, if, if I get it right, you are somehow conditioned to. You got to be better. You got to be better. You got to be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, and what? I actually had a, I had an EFT session like in two thousand seven at a, a big conference we had, um, and I was on stage, and I thought I had this epiphany about perfectionism or um, like the, the imposter syndrome type thing. And that I just didn't feel like, like I always thought I was gonna get found out as a fraud. Somebody would put me in this job and after a period of time, they'd find out I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> and it come down to like, um, my mother was a repeat suicide attempter and everything had to be perfect or literally the world would end for her and somehow I had overlaid that and I'm not sure that that's I don't know if that has anything to do with this I just I just thought wow I thought I was done with this well my guess is it has something to do with it but we'll we'll explore some and and we'll see but the other side of this let's take one more thing get one more credential that, that thing as you learn more and more and more and more approaches, it becomes more difficult to learn any one of them really well because you're spread out over all these other things. Yeah, I chucked everything else and went back to EFT. I was like, <laughs> I've learned this, I've learned this, I've learned this, I've taken this course. And it's like, why? I mean, what I'm doing works. So why am I learning more stuff? Why do I need to be better? I'm good. Well, I'm... And if I can expand on what you just said, this now this is my view and I am biased. So anyway, um, with optimal EFT, not only are you using something that works across the board for just about everything, but you are now accessing the ultimate healing source. Right. Okay. Right. And, and I don't know if you remember, we, we had a conversation a couple of years ago about um, starting at the, in the OAFT course. And I, um, I've been uh, listening to Marianne Williamson since 1992-ish, 91, 92, and really love A Course in Miracles. Yeah. And when, um, when I read some of your backstory and, and, I already loved EFT and thought you were amazing. And then I was like, oh my God. And Gary is a Course in Miracles person. This is amazing. Uh -huh. Not be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. I wanted to just throw myself into it like 100%. What am I like, oh, I got to learn OEFT. And then, um, and then Marianne ran for president and I became her national volunteer coordinator. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this for a while because surely the ACIM stuff will just osmosify into me. <laughs> <laughs> because, of, because of this author, Marianne Williamson's ultimate presence. Yes, yeah. Therefore, therefore, all the magic of A Course in <laughs> Miracles will be 
Come to you. And maybe you don't even need to read A Course in Miracles, okay? Because it, it will happen so magically, yes? <laughs> Why do the work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, well anyway, I'm on hold, and now I, I really, I'm, uh, yeah. Well, just so you know, just so you know, um, like you, I, I am able, if I wish to, to go learn all these other things. I mean, there's lots of them. Right? Um, the conclusion I came to, there's probably a few exceptions here, but most of them, most of them are approaches, methods that are created by mankind existing within this illusion of being separate which you learn in the Course in Miracles and in our OEFT course. And quantum physics tells us that we're not really separate. We're part of a big oneness. But anyway, all these things are made, created by people who, who live within the illusion. So they are ways to get around the illusion better, hopefully. Okay. What we're trying to do is get outside the illusion where the real healing exists. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and th that difference is so big. I, I don't want to bother with, even though these things are creative and well meant and enthusiastic and everything else. I don't want to bother with them because it just takes away from the ultimate sort. Oh, I mean, how are you going to do better than God? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, our unseen therapists is a replacement is a, another name for whatever people ca call God in their own, yeah. in their own, in their own place. Okay. Yeah. It's a spiritual essence, the loving, the loving essence of all of that. You know? Right. That also is not tainted by how we've tried to create spirit in our own image and manipulate it so that. Yeah. Yeah. Get what we want. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but nonetheless, as time is you, you, you end up with a, that's called a human limitation. You've got to do better. You've got to do better or, or something's wrong with you. And there's, it, it never ends. I, I simplified your issue. Did I do it well? Simplified it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Always got to be better. Always got to add something on. And well, a... okay. So, so what we want to do, what we want to do, Lori is, is, um, explore this now we're going to bring an unseen therapist eventually okay but we want to be able to explore get as many pieces of this as we can we want to reframe some stuff if necessary so we put as much on the table as we can so by the time we get to unseen therapist it'll be easier and we can do a little bit more with it and what we're going to try to do here is get a good start on this this is a very broad issue. It comes from lots of different places and so on. So we want to get a good start, maybe kick the center out of it, but there's likely to be some other stuff you need to do, you know, because <laughs> you're one of our students, uh, advanced students and so on. Okay. So. Yes. Yes. And I'm actually really looking forward to the learning opportunity that's happening. Well, all right. But, so, we, but we want to do this exploration. We want to, Look at all the pieces, et cetera. Okay, now, so this, I'm not good enough. This, shall I call it perfectionism? Is that a useful word? Uh, I'm not sure it is perfection. I don't like the word perfectionism because that feels a little narcissistic or it might just be not good enough. Well, okay. All right. I, you were talking about your mother. Your mother had, had to be perfect all the time. And, and I'm, I'm gathering a lot of your current issues has something to do with whatever you were conditioned to, you know, by her because young people get conditioned. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're right. Maybe I'm resistant to the word perfect, perfect or perfectionism because it just feels like heavy on me as well. Well, that's good, actually, because that's more, to me anyway, that's more of a pointer to that's the issue. Thou shalt be perfect or else. Right, right. Like creep, <laughs> creepy crawly on my skin kind of feel, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about, see, see the perfectionism or whatever we want, the not good enoughness. Mm -hmm. um, it all has a cause. Everything has a cause. And of course, what we want to do is aim at the cause, not the symptoms. We don't want to take a, like a, a pill for not being good enough. That, that would right. be aiming at the symptom. We want to get down to what's really driving that. Okay. Yes. And I'm hearing so far, and, and oh, by the way, by the way, I only know about you what you tell me. I don't know your life story. All, all I know is this brief thing that we have here. Okay. So you need to, so, so, so that means I'm going to have to be putting some stuff together and guessing in a way, maybe guessing with experience or something like that, but guessing nonetheless. Yeah. And so if I am making assumptions that aren't fitting somehow, you need to say, oh, no, no, I, no, 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 no. Because we don't want to, I don't want you to agree. And then we go down some pathway and it's the wrong pathway. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going, we're going to do this together. I'm not here to fix you. We're going to do this to get, because the ultimate, the ultimate source for all this comes from within you, which is the unseen therapist. She's not really out there someplace. She's part of you covered over by conditioning and right. Yeah. <laughs> God okay. knows, God knows what as we grow up. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm trying to think now I'm trying to be a, a good helper and thinking about some of the things that have occurred uh -huh. that, um, are my table legs. Yeah. So definitely mom trying to kill herself and me having to make the world perfect around her so that she would stay. Okay. Um, and I also, I'm the oldest of three and it was also my job to make sure that they were okay because I oh, was there. Okay. That's because mother was incapable. Yes. So that so school bus going by right now. Okay. Yes, she was incapable, and she also married a series of men who were incredibly abusive. So I needed to be the barrier for everyone. Abusive to you or to her? Yes, to all of us. To all of you? Yeah. Verbally abusive, physically abusive, sexually abusive? All of the above, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. So you were, you were also on the wrong end of sexual abuse? Correct. We, we, were, we were hit. We were sexually abused. We were talked to in ways that were very not cool for children. And I'm three years older than my little sister and seven years older than my little brother. So it seemed fair for me to try to pull the brunt away from them as well. Wow. All right, well, let me get, I'm going to get to the sexual abuse for a minute because often, depending on it and your response to that, that, um, that can be a, a bigger player than someone thinks sometimes. But the sexual abuse, was it just fondling? Was it actual penetration? Was it, can it you was, tell me? Yes, yes. It was mostly like um, oral sex, fondling, tickling. And I'm going to guess threatening us a lot. A, a lot of it I've blocked. Maybe not a lot of it, but. Um, and some of the stuff that was almost feels more traumatic to me is listening to my little sister when he was with her because we had bunk beds. Yeah. So I knew what he was doing, but I couldn't do anything about it besides cry. So the, the oral sex part is is. Uh... Uh, something you had to do for him or he was doing no. for you or what? It was all done to us. To us. Okay. So you were the recipient of or oral sex, including yeah. your brother? I don't think, I don't think so for my little brother. Okay. No. I don't know if he was even around yet, actually, because I think I was five and my little sister was three when it started. Right. He wasn't born yet. Yeah. All right, so this went on for a number of years or how many years? Um, I think I was about nine when probably four years. Okay. 
So a question I want to ask you, by the way, uh, d discussing it, even talking about it, do you get intense? I don't get intense, but I feel it. I feel, I feel a lot of sadness for my little sister who I am very tough on because I feel like we both went into therapy when we were young and she should be better than she is now. But um, that's right. a you know. I'm making a little note. Hold on. This is, this is all good. We're just putting, exploring, putting stuff on the table. Yeah. Uh, make a note though. Okay. So one of the common, I don't know if it happens for you. See, see, just so you know, we're not so interested in the details of what happened. That is, you know, you were involved in oral sex too early and da, 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 da. Okay. Those are the details. What's important is your response to that. Mm -hmm. We can't change the details. Whatever happened, happened. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of history. Okay. We're not going to change that. Your response to it then, we're not going to change that either. Whatever that was then was what that was then. But your response to it now, we can change. We just need to explore well what your response to it now is. So, but I want to I want to go back to when it was happening, and we're going to start with your response then, as best as you recall it. So, I am I am imagining. Got to correct me. I'm imagining that among your responses is there's something wrong with me in all of this. Uh, I, I'm allowing it. Uh, maybe it feels good and it shouldn't. Uh, I am being taken advantage of and I'm just a, somebody that doesn't have the power to resist. I mean, I'm making these words up. Tell me if they fit. Um, I remember there, there are times that I remember fairly clearly. Um, like the first time it happened, I had no idea what had happened. I, I was in kindergarten. I just started kindergarten and I woke up and my underwear were missing. And I was just baffled. Your underwear was missing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, it became clear, obviously, you know, what was happening when he kept coming in. And it felt like if I didn't do it, I'd be in trouble. And I also remember a time holding my covers up to my chin and just crying and crying until I like made little sores on my eyes from rubbing him. Mm -hmm. That's the only time he left me alone. Like I just, because I was being noisy. So I usually had to be quiet. That's actually really good to know. I had to be, I had to be quiet. Otherwise mom might find out. And she was just in the other room. And I was always very angry that she didn't do something about it. Did she, she did or did not know what was going on? She didn't know. She was so drugged up or passed out that she had no idea what was going on. I think she had no, I mean, if she had, I think she would have done something. But um, at that time, I was, I was very angry because I felt like the one person who should protect me wasn't. And I was always scared. And my sister and I would meet at the um, swing set in the morning and check in with each other and make sure we were okay. Because. Okay. And you were, you were the mother essentially um, for the other, particularly including your sister. Yeah. And you had the response. Correct me always. Okay. You had the responsibility to make sure she was okay. And yet you do not have the physical power. I'm making this up physical power to do anything about it. You had to sit around and, or lay around or whatever, as it was happening. And is there a big should in there? I should have done something. There is a big should. Yeah. I, I remember fantasizing about grabbing like a um a pan and hitting him over the head but i didn't because i was afraid afraid for yourself 
Yeah. Okay. Afraid. Also my dad, you know, I mean, he was my stepdad. Yeah. But for all, you know, intense, he was my father and he was, you don't want to hurt your dad, you know, regardless of what he's doing to you. Yeah. And he's a supposedly a source of love. A father is supposed to be a source of love and, He's verbally abusive. He would hit you as well? Yes. Where? Um, well, it depended. Uh, one time he, he threw an um, a album at me because we weren't cleaning our rooms fast enough and it clipped me in the forehead and I got a big goose egg. But if he would spank us a lot with a belt. Yeah. So, okay. And he threw my mom through a shower door. Um, he was very physically abusive. It was crazy making because he would be physically abusive. Then he'd be really loving. And it was just like, uh, what yeah. do I care, you know? All right. But I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Being the de facto mother, because mm -hmm. mother is not capable of being mother. Okay. Unable to do much. Uh, having a big should on you, I can I can see where the I've got to, I'm not good enough comes from. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean that's a uh, at least that's a candidate for a cause. What I, what I am I on point? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, as far as like the um, protection thing too, I also remember walking back to back with my little sister, and we were both holding butcher knives to um to protect ourselves. And that wasn't when he was in the room, it's when we were afraid he was going to come. Okay. So if he had been there, if he'd actually shown up, I'm sure we would have dropped him or. Okay, the younger you, I can, I'm just, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to, I'm trying to get to cause as best I can, okay. The younger you um, is, is the de facto mother you're responsible for the physical well-being, the sexual well-being, the what well-being in general of your younger siblings. You have a big should on you. You're way too young for this job anyway. So I can't imagine why you would have any other response than I'm not good enough because indeed you weren't. Because I've been to therapy, Gary. Lots okay. and lots and lots of therapy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about I'm talking about then. Oh, then. Then. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I also felt guilty because I um, I kind of hated my parents some of the time. All right now. Remember I said earlier, we're, we're concerned about your current response. Not so much what it was then, but however, your current response is quite often the same as it was then. Okay, typically, all right. Currently, as you, as you go back over those things, do you feel some guilt pangs? Some not good enough pangs? If only pangs? I, I feel, I wish I would have done something differently. Yes. Those are if onlys. Yeah. Okay. Such yeah. as? I wish I would have told someone. I wish I would have. That's, that's the main thing. I wish I would have told somebody earlier. Yeah. Okay. I'm not even the one who told. My little sister told. And I, I just about freaked out when she did because I, I was like, oh, my God, something terrible is going to happen. Yeah, if you if you tell your father's going to somehow learn that, and then boy, you're really in for it because you got him in trouble somehow. Yeah, and nobody was going to believe us because he was such a fine and upstanding member of the community. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, let me shift for a moment. We're still exploring. We're looking for cause and sources for cause. And of course, mother becomes another one. All right. Now, you told me mother made suicide attempts. Obviously, at least from what you're saying, mother was not happy with herself. She, she was, I, I, I can only presume, just because I've sat in this chair so long, 
that her own background was one of rejection, abuse of various kinds. And when someone is subject to all of that, they um, internalize it. It builds in anger, it builds in guilt, it builds in all kinds of emotional stuff. And they don't know how to handle it. Now, you've gone to various kinds of therapy and gotten some progress and so on. I gather your mother did not. Right. She did not have the resources that I have. Okay. So she has to deal with it. And two ways to deal with it, either to resolve it within, which she was not able to do, or project it out. And that's what t- people tend to do. They don't know how to resolve it within. They project it out. They're, they're, they're angry. And they project it out. It's, it's, a, it's a way of getting something seemingly out there. I'm going to throw it out there someplace. And that takes it off of me. And the result of that is, well, maybe temporarily. Wait till tomorrow, it'll show up again because you never really got rid of it. Yeah. You temporarily threw it out there. And who better to throw it out there than somebody who can't resist like young, ch- young children? You're nodding your head. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, she, w- she, she operated from fear and desperation a lot. All right. Now, what we want to get to is your response to all of that. So am I hearing you eventually sort of resigned yourself? Mom's not capable. Tell me. Yeah. On the early side, I believe I resigned myself to that. Okay. That's why you became the mother. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I learned to cook. I I figured out how to sign school notes for all of us. Um, You know, I, I did all the shopping. I took care of everything, made sure everything was clean and nice. And I took over her role for the most part for her as well. I took care of her too. I'm, 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 I'm really hearing in there big need for young you to be, it's a big responsibility, a big should. You got to do it right. So you're, you're cleaning, you're doing the notes, you're probably helping with homework. I don't, yes. Okay. And on and on it goes. And it's really much more than one could expect of someone so young. And it just dawned on me as you're asking this too, that there were a couple of times that I blew up at my sister and brother Uh and thought, wow, I'm, I'm a monster. I'm awful. I'm absolutely awful because I. Yeah. Okay. Right. (laughs) But. You know, what else could you expect? You could only, you only do so much and everybody does. Everybody loses their cool. <laughs> you know, you put enough on you. It's, a, I mean, it's surprising you didn't lose your cool every day. Okay. So. But I remember I, clearly, and I still, I still hold like how awful that was that my poor little sister was being hit by somebody else. And then I hit her. She wouldn't get out of my room and I dragged her off my bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're smiling about that. I'm wondering if you're smiling inside. Well, she and I have talked about it several times. Um, that part wasn't so bad. Where I started hitting her on the side of her head, I was like, no, I was on her shoulders. That part I feel pretty bad about still. Okay. All right. But it's true, Gary. If I, if I actually look at myself in that age in my head right now. Uh-huh. I think I was in sixth grade then that, um, that yes, um, I was exceptionally patient and calm as a child. And it's okay that I blew up once or twice. Yeah. yeah. Like the world on top of me. If, um, as you were being mother to your siblings, if you hadn't done it well, what would the penalty have been? Uh, 
if if things weren't going smoothly, we got hit, we got beaten. And sometimes it was all of us, not just me, you know? I mean, they got hit a lot. Um, we definitely shared the wealth on that one, but if something went wrong, they would put us all in a room and hit each of us until somebody confessed to it, or they would just beat us all. Okay. So. so tell me if I'm on target with this presumption of mine. Okay. You must do it right. Let us say you must do it perfectly. Right, perfect, whatever that, may, whatever that is. You must do it right or else you're going to get hit. Or someone's going to die, yes. <laughs> well, or okay. <laughs> big penalty, big penalty if you don't do it right. Yes. Okay. Now I'm hearing I'm hearing the centerpiece of a cause. Uh, how am I doing? Yes, I'm starting to feel it. All right. So there you are, very young. This is all very understandable given the circumstances. Okay. You have to be mother, and you you damn well better do it right, or else kind of. And it's a big else, a big else. Somebody might even die. And then you're really responsible. And I'd be fucked then because then I'm home with, with my stepdad. Yeah. Along. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. You so, know what's mad is that I'm not done with this. I have done so much work on this and it makes me mad that there's still something there and that that power is still there. Well, we're going to try to work on that. Right. Okay. That's what, that's why we're exploring. We're trying to get out of all of those details, you know, a little piece of gold that we can put on the table. Well, there's more pieces of gold that we can put on the table for unseen therapists to give us some relief. On. Yeah. Okay. But here you are, here you are now an adult. How old are you now? 54. 54. Okay. So here you are. Decades later, and always correct me, okay? Mm -hmm. Still carrying around, I got to be perfect. I got to do it right. I got to do all these other, you know, uh, therapeutic modalities and courses. And, and even then, I think I'm a fraud because I haven't done it right, all of it. There's more, more to do. And if one more thing, and it, uh, behind all that, I'm hearing, even though you may not be verbalizing it i'm hearing in the background if i don't do it well i'm going to get hit or there's a big penalty or else now are you aware of that does that fit not fit Feed me feedback for me i totally feel it when i think about my young self it seems it seems unrealistic for my current self i don't I might be getting in my head too much right this second. Um, like hey, the, go the ahead. My head is like so good about like everything I do in my life. So it's me who's penalizing me. It's not anybody external at this point. Well, yeah, but what I'm, what I'm hearing from what you're saying is it's me, meaning it's my past conditioning that's still kicking around. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's what it would be. I mean, it's, it's like echoes of things show up, even though you're not able to verbalize them. It's still so conditioned that okay, I better do it right. I, I, I just, I'm, from almost day one or early on in my life, I got to do it right. There's a big responsibility or else, or else, or and big or else. I mean, really big or else. Okay. Now the or else is gone. But the conditioning stays. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. So maybe you're saying, again, correct me. Maybe you're saying, I'm not feeling it so much today, and I'm hearing, because the penalty isn't really there. Or I don't really want to get into it because it's, it's painful, and I can dance around it. <laughs> Well, you're laughing. Well, you're laughing. You're laughing. Yes, because that that sounds really smart. 
it's so easy to dance around things. Oh, okay. So much more comfortable to dance around things than to well, actually. Because when you were when you were saying it didn't seem all that realistic, the all that realistic now, I was listening to you, and while my thermometer, my intuition isn't perfect, I'm getting uh, no, no, it's, just, it's bigger than that. Okay, I mean that's what that's what I was getting. It doesn't make me right, but that's what I was getting. Okay. Yeah. She's, she's dancing. Yes. Is what yes. I was getting. Okay. Yes. I'm also a product of everybody else's needs are more important and hurts more. And I need to just suck it up and carry on. Um, and it, when you said that just now, I felt like, you know, I've, I've got it so good compared to blah. So really it's not that bad. And, you know, I should just, I'd be happy that I've got what I've got and I've had the healing I've had and the forgiveness I've had, you know, I'm fine. Well, would it be nice to be free of this? I've got to, I've got to do, I've, I've got to do one more healing what method or something. <laughs> one more class. <laughs> yes. yes. And it, is, it, it, it is at the one more class and the effort and money it takes to go do one more class. It's the need in there that you've got to be right, perfect, do it well, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. or else and therefore even though you get this new class there's another one <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it never ends yay yes yeah yeah like i was as you were talking about like um old and new perceptions or perspectives i was thinking about i had a dream um and my stepfather came in and i felt like i had like this amazing forgiveness dream uh-huh. came to this vo- a volleyball game that I was at and he sat in the bleachers behind me and I was actually happy to see him. It's like all this stuff was washed away. I hadn't seen him for years and years. So I was an adult at this point. And I thought, wow, he was, he was a Vietnam vet. He saw terrible stuff. He had to have had abuse when he was a kid too. I don't have his history, but I thought he was doing the best he could with what he had. Well, now that dream is could, is potentially important. Um, uh, it, it was forgiveness within the dream. How how did it translate, if at all, outside the dream? Once you woke up, are I, you st- are you still still afraid of him? He's dead. Uh huh. Okay. So I'm not, and I don't know that I was afraid of him before that. I know that I felt like I needed to to prove myself like how together I am. He called my house one time to talk to my little brother. And I hadn't talked to him in years and years and years. And instead of saying, you know, fuck you or whatever you would say to somebody who was abusive to you, uh-huh. I tried to sound really collected and put together and, oh, one moment, please let me go get him for you. You know, it was like, I remember thinking, I want him to think I'm amazing. I don't want him to think I'm broken. Okay. Um, that's a that's a sort of revenge thing. See, you didn't get to me after all. You yes, dirty, I, you you dirty so and so. When he used to spank me, I would try not to cry so he wouldn't feel like he had power over me. Like you can't. Mm, I'll just I'll just suck it up. You just go ahead, keep hitting me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, but I also I also feel like um, that dream. And I used to work in a, in a domestic violence shelter on the hotline and somebody called in one time who was a pedophile and he was in tears talking about how much it hurt him, like how he could not felt like he couldn't control himself and it was just killing him. And that felt like a real, like a, another forgiveness release moment for me to hear this man crying about his kids and how he needed help. He desperately wanted help. Yeah. Am I hearing that your stepfather may have been a sort of pedophile? I've always, that's what I've always claimed, you know, I think when you're um, having sex with small children that you get called a pedophile. I don't know. Maybe that's not the definition. Well, there, there's diff- different levels of sex. I gather there was no penetration, no sexual intercourse involved. It was all oral. If I hear, If I hear you right. Yes. Yeah. I still think that's, okay. I would count that as sex. 
I mean, when well, it's- yeah, 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 indeed. I, I don't know the definition of pedophile, but but he's certainly in that bucket someplace. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Again, though, we're interested in your response to all these things. And we're interested really in your current response as you think about it, because that's what replays when you have to go take that next course, for example, yeah. or build within yourself. I'll never get there. I'm a fraud. I can't do it. You know, all that stuff. That's really, it's, that's big time in your way. I would think you're nodding your head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm some, I'm, I'm nodding too, as I'm hearing like little things pop into my head, like, um, I thought something was wrong with me physically because I'd been sexually abused. Um, like I would never be able to get pregnant or like, I always, I always questioned myself um, and thought I was damaged. So when I, when I said that about him spanking me, that's what came up was damaged being damaged. Okay. I'm making a little note. Okay. All right. I want to bring an unseen therapist. Um, but I, I, I want to I, I want to explore one other little thing first. You've already talked about this, but I just want to explore some. Um, your stepfather and mother, the sources of love that really weren't able to deliver on that level. They were delivering the opposite. Okay, they weren't giving you loving feelings. They were giving you 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 are no good feelings. I'm saying it right. I'm going to share one more thing. Okay. My mother got pregnant with me so that she would have someone to love her. So my job, in addition to what I created for myself because of my situation was to love her and help her be okay in the world from the get go. <laughs> okay. From rebirth. Um, and she constantly told me how much she loved me. And how amazing I, she she would, you know, she would tell me how wonderful I was, that she was jealous of me, that she wished she was more like me. And that while that once or twice might have felt nice, that also made me feel like I should not be as much or I should tamp myself down a little bit because I, that was an awful feeling to, to feel like my mother who was supposed to be the person I was aspiring towards was jealous of me that, um, so I felt like she loved me. I felt like she sucked at it, but I felt like she loved me. All right. But not stepfather. I, no, I felt like he loved me too. I just felt it was, it was, it wasn't all one thing. It was, yeah. you know, that's, I think that's what made it so horrible sometimes is like, there wasn't like a, it wasn't black and white. Yeah. 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 Might have okay. Loving and then different times it was awful. All right. But what I want to explore before we bring an unseen therapist is a reframe kind of thing, but we've already talked about this. I just want to go a little, little bit more. Um, your parents are supposed to be sources of love and they were to some degree, but there was also this other side of it, which was you better behave or else you better be perfect or else you better do it right or else with a big or else. Okay. Now I want to, I want to ask you logically. Not your, we already know what your emotional response is because we've been talking about this for some time now. Logically, logically, um, is there still something wrong with you that you need to correct to be perfect? No. Logically, no. Okay. But emotionally, here it comes and you, you, keep, you keep complying with the emotional urge the emotional response what yeah. we have that we have that right okay what we want to do is get the here the, see if it see if this helps 
with, with what do they call it? Comic relief. We're in the heavy stuff of comic relief. Does this does this help? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hang on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see, in, in one sense, well, this is serious, serious stuff. On the other hand, unseen therapist, she could be serious with you, but, you know, but, but she sees it much differently, much lighter. She sees a, a more beautiful outcome from all of this. And she's got a great sense of humor and so on. So we don't want to sit there and get overly, overly serious, serious, serious. You know, she may crack a joke. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, what we might like to try to do, the effort here, the good start we're going to aim towards here is to take your emotional, what's wrong with me? I got to do it right or else. And have that match up to that's illogical. You know, everything is fine. I, you know, I, we could, everybody could always improve on something. I, there's just no exception to that, myself included, and all of that, okay? <laughs> we could always, always improve. So be it. But where we are, okay, it's good enough for now. <laughs> it would be nice if your emotional response matched the logical. Yes, it would be very nice. Okay. And there's freedom in that. And so that's where we need to go. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't feel like I'm really, really, really far off. I just feel like there's like some little thread that just is stuck there that needs to be clipped. Well, I think you're dancing a little bit, and the little, the little, the little <laughs> thread is something more than a little thread, but, but collapsible, whatever it is, nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll Fair see. Enough. We'll see. We'll see. We want to start. We want to start with a um, specific event. So, if you can, and, and and as you know, as one of our advanced students, the farther back you go, the more foundational it's likely to be. Okay, in time, farther back you go in time. So, if you could locate a specific event with your stepfather, with your mother or with anybody where you're getting the idea, the response, I better do this right or else. Okay. Can you locate something like that for me? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, how old were you at the time? Uh, first grade, so that would be six. Yeah, age six, okay. All right, and, and um, we have a sentence that we use in our advanced course, the moment when whatever happened and my currently feel, okay. So say it to me within that sentence, if you can, the moment when, what happened? Um, the moment when he threw the record at me. Okay. And I currently feel what about it? Therein lies the problem. And I currently feel like shaking my head isn't a feeling. Um, not angry, scared. And close your, close your eyes, if you will. Go back. Run that movie. Tell me if it's still scared. And give me a zero to ten, a current zero to ten feeling on it. Okay, there's a helicopter over. Is that bothering the recording that you're doing? Well, I can hear it. I can hear it, but. Okay, so carry on? Yeah, sure. Walk inside. It's like right on top of me. <laughs> All right. Well, wait, 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 wait. Let's take a moment and forgive the helicopter. Okay. Bless you, helicopter. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'm closing my eyes. I'm back in the room. It, it, there, there is um, fear. Yeah. It's not about the record. I know the record's coming because I've already had the experience, but I was afraid of what was going to happen to both of us, my sister and I both, if, if we didn't hurry up and get things done. So it's fear and protectiveness, but mostly fear. Okay. And the current intensity on a zero to 10 scale? A two. A two. Mm -hmm. Go back again. And this time exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings. Don't dance. Literally try to get yourself worked up about this. Get into it. Be in your own body, looking out of your own eyes. And if it's still a two, it's a two. But tell me if that, if that changes. I'm, I'm going to have to shift to the one where I was holding the covers up. Okay. All right. All right. The moment when? How old are you first? Okay. I don't, I'm not, I'm not for sure. I know we had bunk beds, so probably, probably about the same age, probably around six. All right. Maybe a little younger. Um, so it'd be the, the moment when... I cried so hard that I made stores in my eyes. Okay, but th let me stop you there a second. Yeah. We need, if we can, and that's okay, it's okay for this one, but if we can, we need to be more specific still. You said earlier something about covering under the blanket or something like that. Um, was there something being said, something caused you to cry, something being said, something being done? So, you know, so we need a crescendo moment if, we, if you can find Jerry it. Jerry came into the room in the middle of the night, and um, I knew he was coming and he was going to be touching me, and I didn't want him to. So I, I pulled the sheet up and I held it really tight. And he was like, just like he was pulling at the sheet, telling me to let go, let go. And I just cried and cried and cried. And all right. I'm gathering from that, but you correct me. Okay. I'm gathering from that. There are two crescendos that I heard. One is he walked in the room, you're going, oh, oh what's gonna happen now? That's a that would be a crescendo moment. Another crescendo moment would be you're there and he's pulling at the seat. You no, 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 no. Okay. Those that would be crescendo. That's the bigger one for me. It was like just like just please stop. Don't you know, go away, go away, go away. And and him like it it took long enough that I cried enough and rubbed my eyes enough that it, I hurt myself. All right. What number is that on a scale of zero to ten? That's more like a six. Like I can feel that a little bit in me physically. Uh, are you getting attention? What what's going on? Really light tingle, light light energetic tingle. I don't want to put you through unnecessary turmoil, okay? Emotional turmoil. Let me ask you this. If, if, don't do it, just if, I want you to guess for me. This is our tearless trauma technique thing, okay? If you were to close your eyes and vividly get into this, vividly imagine it, really, really get into it, would you be a six? Might you be more, less? What's your guess? I think if I if I went back and I would I would probably push it up because I would go into the sounds and right now I'm just seeing and feeling but if I pull in sounds and more sensory stuff it would go up. Guess for me a number. 8. All right. Okay. All right, what I'd like to do is do an unseen therapist session now. Um, and start with that specific event. 
it represents potentially lots of stuff, you know, Oh, 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 do it right or else is in there. You know, this is the or else part of it. Okay. Um, and then I don't know where we're going to go from there because unseen therapist is a good kind of guide and stuff shows up for me and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if that's okay with you, we'll go ahead and start. Does that work? Yeah. All right. And we'll probably be here a little while. Okay, but it's all being recorded, so I'm going to send you the recording and you can revisit it. And chances are it's the kind of thing where, where you redo it, you know, rerun the recording in the session multiple times. You'll probably get more each time, is my guess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so if you would, just, just close your eyes and uh, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just just recall a loving moment, someplace in your life, anywhere in your life. Whenever you're there, just nod your head. All right, good. So all we're doing with that recalling a loving moment, we're just inviting unseen therapists. We're ready for her humor, if that's what occurs. Her wisdom. We're going to borrow from her ultimate love, which you and I in this human plane aren't aware of that it's also within us because it's covered over by too much other stuff, including what we're going to be working on here. So we're just telling her, you know, unseen therapist, we're listening to the ego all the time, but for now, we're going to listen to you. We're going to hand you a little something and let's just see what, see where we go with this. She's happy with that. She's been sitting here guiding you all this time. Me too. <laughs> okay. We're not listening, <laughs> but she's patient. She just, here it comes. And, but now you're going to listen. Now you're going to look good, good, good. So shift your focus back to, oh, around your age six. And there you are in your bed, your stepdad walks in the room and immediately you get, oh, what's going to happen? You know, the or else walked in the room. Another or else is your mother, but a bigger or else perhaps would be your stepfather. And he's pulling on the sheets. Oh, no, 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 no. That's your crescendo moment, which if you really get into would be an eight, okay. Now, unseen therapist sees it. She knows about it. She's been listening in all this time anyway. All right. And she sees your response. You're only six years old. You've had all these experiences before. You already know, you know, what's likely to happen here, and it's not good. And she also knows that somewhere within all of that is the young impressionable you just like every six-year-old is young and impressionable and whatever adults and sources supposed sources of love and so on are telling you is what you buy because you have no real life experience even to debate the issue even though you may know it's wrong you also know behind all of that an unseen therapist knows you know. But you've got a big responsibility here. You're age six and not all the children are there, but you're also knowing you got to be mother here. You got to protect others. You got to be right. You got to be whatever. And now you're faced with this. This is fear, maybe confusion. This is not good. This is the or else going on and she also knows that this or else and many or else's like it have gotten together and still influence your everyday life and thoughts maybe consciously maybe subconsciously but it shows up it replays oh let's take one more course because we got to do it right we got to be perfect we got we can't be the fraud we can't be the 
six-year-old, the nine-year-old, and so on, that has to be the mother and has to do it just right. And of course, is doing a good job, but never, ever perfect. Did I say that last one right? Mm. Yes. All right. And let me interject here one second for now, is we need to do this together. So as I'm doing this and narrating and unseen therapist is coming in and all of that, if you have input, something is showing up, we're working together. We need to know it. Mm -hmm. We need to know it. Yeah, I actually did just have an insight that I hadn't thought of before. All right, please. Which is that time when I, what I considered defended myself, that was, I think, the last time I did that. Because when I protected me, Jerry went to my sister. So I was off the hook, but it hurt her. And am I hearing guilt in there? Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Close the eyes. And so, ah, now we have this. We have this. And while you don't see, see, that's, that's not being a perfect mother. That's being a perfect six-year-old, perhaps, because what else is a six-year-old going to do? Everybody has the lookout for myself somehow in there. Okay. It's just built into the package. It comes with the, <laughs> it, it comes with the container and the packaging and everything else. It's just, we got to look out for ourselves, but now we look out for ourselves and somebody else is going to be hurt. And that's a big one too. That's another or else. Yeah. And that's that, where this double or else. Yeah. And so we're not excusing the behavior. Very important thing. Turning back the clock, it might be better for your sister if you took the brunt of everything. Yes, yes, okay. But we all have our moments of weakness. We all have our giving, give, give in points, and you're only six. <laughs> okay. And while maybe not funny, we do need to lighten up yeah. a little bit about it because it is a human response. Right. And I didn't know that's what was going to happen. Yeah. Okay. But what, what would happen in such cases like that, that case and other cases like that would tend to give you guilt, would tend to say, Oh, something's wrong with you. You're not perfect. You better take that extra class. Okay. You got to make up for it. You're a fraud. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Always, 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 always. Okay. Unseen therapist sees that. She's understanding that. We're doing a little reframing now. As, as I, and thank you for that input. Really big input. Because it isn't just the fear for you. It's the guilt for what went on. A very human experience. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody, by the way, that doesn't look out for themselves under dire circumstances like that? I know people who do that, but it's very, very unhealthy. Okay. All right. Again, we're not excusing the behavior. We are understanding it. We're ultimately want to get to forgiveness on all of this because that's where the freedom really lies. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a great step towards true, perfect, lofty, spiritual forgiveness is let's understand what's going on and back and lighten up a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're into understanding the six-year-old has a reaction. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to forgive her. Being a sister? Um, yeah. My, f forgive myself for at oh, six oh. years for doing it the way I did, you know. Okay. Her, her being you at six. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Good feedback. Thank you. Keep, keep the feedback going. We work, we're doing this together. Love is best when shared. Right? And in this yes. way, we're working together 
lovingly to share a progress on this issue. So we look back at young you, who's doing all this work, preparing herself at this point to be mother, okay, having to endure all of this, having to make decisions to protect herself, even not knowing what's going to happen elsewhere, carrying on guilt about it, even though she really didn't know what was going to happen. And we can look back at her, can we not? and say, you know, you were doing the best you could, given the circumstances, your beliefs, your understanding at the time. I see you nodding your head. Is that, is mm -hmm. that fitting? No, it's so interesting. I'm seeing this. I know this is all happening while we're talking, but I'm seeing this vision of, I don't see, I just see the hands of the unseen therapist on both me and Tracy and she's just like doing like this around like this big purple glowing orb that's inside of me. Uh huh. Even though things are going on out here, you know, Jerry's still in the room. All that stuff is still happening. It's like, it's like. It's like she's making a container. She's making a container, a protective container. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's like a, um, it's like a glowing crystal ball of purple, and it's it's really beautiful. And like that's where the energy is. That's where the realness is. And the stuff that's going on out there is just stuff that's going on out there. But it's like she's holding the good stuff there. All right. All right. Is forgiveness part of that good stuff? Yeah, it's just love. Just all love. The rest of that stuff is like a shadow on the outside. All right. All right. Good. 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 And I'm so, so happy for Tracy, too. So she's got us both covered. All right. So let's um, pick up on that metaphor of that ball, all right? So as you see that ball, are the two of you in the ball? Or are you looking at the ball? It's inside of me. It's inside of you. Like it's my whole torso is, is this big glowing purple, beautiful thing. And so is hers. So it's, it's in me, it's part of me. And she has a ball inside of her. Tracy, my sister, yeah. Okay. An unseen therapist is almost like, you know, those psychics in the tents where they're doing this around the ball. She's putting her oh. hands on both of us, you know. Okay. Would it be feasible for you in your imagination to imagine this big ball, ball of love, and both you and Tracy were in the ball rather than the ball being in you. Does that work? Uh, it's not what I'm seeing, but I, I, I can see I could expand. Actually, it's really comfortable like it is. I love what okay. she's doing. All right. 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 So in your own mind, in your own mind, while that ball is within you, can you look down from your head, let's say, down to the ball in your torso? And is the ball transparent so you can see in it? Yes, it's, it's like swirling energy. And the unseen therapist has her hands on me and her. So we're connected. You know, it's like she's the conduit. She's the uh, holder. That's, it's like we're both in a protected space, but she's pulling it all together. She's all right. Well, as you're looking down now within yourself at the transparent ball and you see yourself within it, can you also bring in Tracy's ball to be within you for the moment? 
Mm -hmm. All right. So now you're looking at it, and there's you and Tracy, both of whom have experienced the wrong kinds of things. Both of you who likely have the or else piece, although you're the mother, so you got a bigger or else piece than, than her. But now notice, notice in there, as you are floating around or existing with the two of you or existing within this ball, this loving ball, that you become aware of things that seemingly you did wrong, maybe because you're stepdad said it was wrong or your mother said it was wrong or whatever, but you didn't do things just right. You didn't do them perfect, which of course nobody does. But there you are within the ball and there's these little spots around there. Little spots that says, ah, you're not quite so perfect. Remember you did this and you did this and you did this and you thought that and you said this and these little spots. Take Tracy's hand. And you each have your own little spots. Go from spot to spot. And there's a spot. Oh, I didn't do that one right. Oh, I should have done this differently. Go to those little spots. And as you look at the spots, let unseen therapists show you those spots and let you know that they're just spots. Everybody has spots. <laughs> Everybody has weaknesses, okay? And this may be her sense of humor, but if you can, put a little clown face on the spots, you know? Uh oh, there you go again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a little, have a little circus music. Do, 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 do. Well, you know, seeing them now, because that she's doing what you said, I'm a parent. And I'm like, oh my God, that was ridiculous. Well, that's, uh, that's part of where we're going, my dear. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, the, the things that, that made me like so afraid were so minor. Well, all right, now let's, I'm seeing two levels of this for the moment, maybe even more than that. But for the moment, for the moment, take your time, go with Tracy from spot to spot to spot. Do the circus clown thing if you want, or just let them pixelate and float off into the cosmos, whatever you want to have unseen therapists do with them. Take your time, whatever it takes. And it, whenever you are, have completed this, gone as far as you can go, whether it's perfect or not, we don't care. It's your own effort, okay? Whenever, whenever you're ready, just, just say so. Say, well, okay, I'm done. And we will proceed from there, okay? Go ahead. I'm just gonna tell you what she's doing. All right, go ahead. I'm getting a glimpse and then she's flicking it. I got to see it, now she's flicking it off. Okay. I lost a barrette. And I got a spanking for that. And she's like, how ridiculous is this? Flick. Okay. Now she's doing that flick, but what it, what's going to be important here is what's happening to your response to it. Does that get flicked as well? Not there, gone, ridiculous. Uh, what? Tell me. Like, oh my God, how, how did that, how? <sighs> my parents were a mess. That was not a deal. That was not a big deal. And my poor little self, I just want to go, oh, sweet thing.
she feels like an amazing nanny that I wish I'd had with me at the time right now, because in some of them, she's holding my hand and I just look up at her and we both roll our eyes and go, really? It's like the, the energy around it is kind of like petering out, floating away, mm -hmm. okay. seeing it for what it is or was. And the interesting thing too, is there are not that many of them. Like I thought there'd be a whole lot more. Uh -huh. Okay. Oftentimes one big one represents a whole bunch of other ones, you know, just happens, tends to happen. Yeah. And actually the little ones, the, the ones that she like mag gave me a little magnifier glass on, felt bigger until we looked at them together. And then I realized that I had given them more power or they had had more power or they were hurting me more than, than they should have or needed to or that my fear was real at the time. Yes, of course. And now they just seem crazy. Uh, I can't remember what you told me to do, but I feel like we're coming to an end. Okay. Well, keep the eyes closed. We're going to go into phase two. <laughs> now, instead of being you and Tracy at their very young age, running around looking at these spots, unseen therapists has now help, been helping you with. Now it's going to be you. And there you are inside the ball going to new spot, different spots. They aren't spots from way back when with your stepdad and things like that. Rather, they are more current spot. Ah, here comes the next course. Oh, I need to take this one. Go to spots where you've had maybe conversations with people where your, your internal thoughts was, oh, I didn't do it right. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, I got to do something else. Oh, I didn't, I didn't match up here. Oh, something's wrong with me. Um, go to those more current things with unseen therapists. And go to those spots, narrate it if you want, and see what happens. Well... I, this one is a divorce and it took 23 years to get there and I didn't want to mess it up. The relationship, it seemed like it should be so good, but it was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. Hang on, I'm getting in my head. I wanted to quit that, cut that out. I feel like I need to justify and talk about it. And she just went, no, honey, you're fine. What you did was just right. And I'm definitely getting, you did your best. You're getting what? You did your best. Oh, okay. All right. Well, for perspective, it's pretty much impossible to do, <laughs> to do a divorce just right. 
I, the marriage, I did my best. I stayed as long as I did. Well, I did everything. yeah, but it's pretty hard to do a marriage just right, too. <laughs> okay. True story. True story. <laughs> I feel like I keep trying to look at these things that I did wrong or didn't do good enough and keep getting told, yeah, but take a step back and look at what actually happened as opposed to what I expected to happen. Even with the marriage, I didn't know if I should get married. And that lasted 23 years. And it wasn't bad. It just wasn't what we both needed to be in. I didn't do that wrong. I just, I lived that how I needed to live it. I'm just, I'm getting that perspective over and over again with the things I keep trying to go to and say, yeah, but what about this? It's like, what about that? If I actually take a step back and look at it, it went well. I, I showed up as much as I possibly could I don't feel scolded, but I feel like redirected over and over. Gently? Yeah. Like what I would do to my child. Like, hang on a second. You didn't mess that up. Yes, it feels very loving. Are we near the end of that part? Okay, yes, because I've been how hard I've, I've been on myself. Yeah. I've got <laughs> one I've got one more for you. All right. One more level. Now, I both your parents have passed away? Yes. Okay. Well, well my dad's alive, my stepdad's dead. Okay. So Go back into the ball and be whatever age you think is appropriate for this. But walk into the ball and on one, on one side of you is your mother and you're holding her hand. And on the other side of you is your stepdad and you're holding his hand, if you can, in a forgiving, let us say understanding manner. Again, we're not going to excuse the behaviors. We're going to understand them. And within the ball are going to be some more dark spots, events with your mother, your stepfather, and so on. Maybe many. Maybe you've only got to go to one or two or three because that generalizes over the rest, whatever. But take your time. Can you, uh, let me ask you first, can you adopt a loving internal response as you hold their hands in an understanding way and go to these spots. Can you do that? Or is there uh, too much uh, going on? Um, as soon as you said that I could, I actually had my whole arm around my mom. I didn't. Okay. She's. All right. And we I, are. I, I, can get close, I can get close to Jerry. I don't know that I really want to touch him though. <laughs> All right. Well, Maybe you will touch it. Do what you can. Be realistic about it. Don't force something. But have him there. Have him there with the understanding that here was a guy with Vietnam War. That's a lot of trauma there. Typically very unresolved. Likely PTSD. You don't know about his background, but it was likely abusive rejection. And why else would someone behave in this way, by the way? Okay, so if you can develop a 
understanding of where he's coming from. We're not going to excuse the behavior. No, he's an adult. He could have behaved differently regardless of all of that. Okay. But he didn't. We're trying to understand where he comes from. And with that understanding comes freedom. So there you are, mama one side, Jerry is it? Mm -hmm. Jerry on the other. Whatever you can do, whatever you can do. We don't need to force it. Unseen therapist is going to assist in this. Go to the dark spots. And if you want, narrate it or just do it solo. But let me know. Say it again. What are my dark spots right now? Uh, the dark spots are whatever events occurred, you know, that were deleterious to you. Oh, the or else's. Well, there's one dark spot. I've got my arm around mom. And Unseen Therapist is helping us right now. And she had one suicide attempt where she ended up in the hospital and was gone for maybe a 30-day stint. And I was so angry with her. And right now I'm just feeling how much pain she was in. Mm. And the unseen therapist just put her hand on both of our heads. Mm. And she didn't flick this one. It's just kind of floating off, moving away from, from us. Okay. All right. And I want, I want to be loving towards Jerry and I'm feeling like, like little earthquakes happening in him. Like all the shock and trauma that he's had. So my mom put my her hand out to Jerry. I think that's what I needed so that I wasn't trying to be the fixer again or somehow be between them because I always was. <sighs> yeah, it's actually their issue. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and that was just really helpful.
Now I feel like the unseen therapist is kind of just hurting us together a little bit. Not, not in a pushy way at all, Love, very loving. And I think just the release of fear and the proximity and the ability, that feels like a step, that feels like a, a shift. Like, um, like it, it helped me to remember and let go of being angry about having to ask for child support from him because she wouldn't talk to him. Like I hadn't even thought about that forever. So that's another spot. And it feels like they're starting to get lighter. Emotionally lighter. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this part's coming to an end. <laughs> okay. Well, open your eyes then. Open your eyes. Okay. So I want to do a little, just a little test. I'm, a, as you know, I'm a great one for testing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Close your eyes and go back to this specific event. Um, where here, here Jerry comes in the room. You're holding the blanket up. He's pulling on it. You were an A at the moment. You were feeling a tingling, I think, in your legs, if I recall it right. Oh, no, it was up here. Oh, up there. Okay, I'm sorry. You were feeling that that tingling you also had some guilt because he went off to your sister tell me if you're still an eight on that tell me what happens I'm definitely not an eight i'm trying to get it back right now okay I'm, I'm trying. Okay, Gary, all I'm getting is he doesn't want to do it. It's like he can't even come over and grab the sheets from me. I, I can't. Okay. We're interested not only in the details, and the details seem to have shifted here in the memory, okay? We're interested in your response. Are you afraid still? No. Is that a, a zero, a three, a five, what? I'm, I'm going to try one more time to, to get some energy up. Okay. All right, please. Okay. I can't pull it up. I can't get it. All right. Well, that is that is a good sign when you can't even find it. Okay. Um, I know it's there. I just finished telling you about it, so I know it's there. You know, I'm, historically. Yeah. No tingling. Nothing. Okay. Well, that's a good clue that we did something with that, but I never want to be fooled by temporary results. So tomorrow morning, run that movie again. And what you're doing, and chances are you're not going to get anything, but you might. And if you do, then that means there's more to do still. But it likely means that if you do get some intensity, there is some other aspect showing up that is not, was not on the table. Something else happened within the event. Some other emotion shows up or something like that. Okay. Yeah, attention if something shows up. Yeah. And so, and so that's, that's 
If you don't have the right kind of training in this, the conclusion would be, oh, well, it didn't work. When in fact, it, chances are it worked very well. New things came up, more to do. Okay, and that's a much, a much different response, much more useful. As a yeah, I, know, that felt, I mean, I'm, I'm not new to this, so I know what to do and I can't make it come up. So it's, I'm like, hmm, that's good. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, but there are other specific events in your world. See, this was a good start. And I, I'm hoping we kick the center out of it. We did something, we moved something material in all of this. But there's still more things and more, you know, angries and angers and resentments and stuff that is bound to be showing up around the edges someplace, at least. Sure. Yeah. So more needs to be done. But I'm sending you this recording so you can replay it. And like I said earlier on, keep replaying it. You're likely to have more things come up you know, more pointers. Mm -hmm. It's likely to, to land a little more solidly each time. Okay. Kind of thing, so. I feel surprisingly like peaceful, a little wrung out, but also very peaceful and, and soft and fuzzy right now, you know? Well, wrung, wrung out and peaceful are both fairly standard results because we, you know, we can, through quite a bit here okay yeah. um and there's a lot of stuff in your background and, and all of that mm -hmm.